Hey, what's up Witcher fans? It's Strangelove here, and I'm back to do another analysis video of the latest gameplay trailer from The Witcher 3 Wild Hunt. And you guys have been asking me to do this breakdown for a little while now, so I'm just gonna slowly go through and uh, take a closer look at some of the parts of this trailer, so hopefully you guys enjoy my commentary throughout. And if you did like the video, make sure to hit that like button to show your support. Alright you guys, without further ado, let's get into this trailer. Alright, so the trailer opens up with a beautiful shot of a seaside village, as well as some next-gen sheep, which are looking pretty good. And this next shot is actually a distance shot of a city called Oxenfurt, and I know a lot of people think this is Novigrad, but Novigrad would be a lot bigger, and Oxenfurt is known to have those pointed roofs, as well as that big bridge off to the side, so I'm pretty sure this is Oxenfurt. Now this next shot shows off some of the active fauna that you can encounter in the forest, and off to the left hand side there's this little shrine here that some of you have guessed might be the Eternal Fire Shrine, which is typically found on the outskirts of Vizima, so maybe that's where this shot is taking place. Now in this next shot we see a landscape that's just lightly dusted with snow, and we know that there's going to be dynamic weather systems in The Witcher 3, uh, but this really shows off just how beautiful some of the landscapes can look, and I think this is definitely one of my favorite environmental shots. And we go from a beautiful landscape to checking out this big fugly ogre, which seems about right. Now this next shot shows a sort of Scandinavian Viking inspired ship funeral, uh, where you light it on fire at a distance with a fire arrow, and it looks like this dead Viking's wife or lover is also unfortunately going along for the ride. Now this next scene is definitely some fan service. We get to see the infamous stuffed unicorn mentioned in The Sword of Destiny, and if you haven't read those short stories, basically Yennefer has a bit of a kinky side and she likes to have sex in a lot of random places, and one of those places that her and Geralt like to get down and dirty is on the back of a stuffed unicorn, and it even mentions that one time it collapsed beneath them while they were doing it. But since this unicorn seems to be fairly intact, this is most likely a flashback or a dream of one of those sexy time moments that Geralt and Yennefer had on the unicorn's back. Now this shot shows sort of glowing blue versions of what looked to be those echidnas from the previous gameplay, but I'm not sure if that's what these are, uh, but it looks like Geralt has to take his troop there and talk to them about something. And this douchebag right here is gonna get what's coming to him later on in this trailer, so I'll point that out in just a bit. So in this clip we get to see a female elf that Geralt is probably banging, as well as some typical racism against non-humans that's prevalent in the Witcher world. And as the camera pans out we get to see a perspective from the inside of Oxenfurt, at least that's where I believe this is taking place. It has the same pointed rooftops, and off in the distance you can see a windmill which may have been the same one from earlier in this trailer where we got to see the outside perspective of Oxenfurt, so I'm pretty sure that's where this is taking place. Welcome travel. Drink with me you cocksucker! Now to me, this shot looks a lot more like Novigrad because it's a huge city, but it could still be Oxenfurt, I'm not 100% sure. Alright, I want to stop and talk about this vineyard shot for just a second. Now at first this is a pretty ordinary scene of a bunch of NPCs working in a vineyard, but when I thought about other open world RPGs, I can't recall seeing vineyards or farms in those games, even though it's not completely uncommon, they're there sometimes, but it's just not something that you see very often. And when an open world fantasy like this is trying to convince you of a world that's full of people who obviously need to eat and like to drink wine, you would think you would see a lot more farms and vineyards along the way, so uh, I just thought it was an interesting choice of them to put this vineyard shot into their trailer. Now in this clip we see a bustling colorful market which most likely takes place in Novigrad because Novigrad is a pretty densely populated area and if you look at the top part of the clip uh, we can zoom in and just slightly see a coat of arms that looks very similar to the Novigrad coat of arms that's shown on the wiki page so my guess is that this takes place in Novigrad. And uh, in this scene we get to see Geralt sailing, which is something that we get to do probably a lot of in The Witcher 3, especially when we're at the Skellige Isles. Um, I assume we're gonna have to sail from island to island, so that should be pretty fun. And what I love about this scene, besides how beautiful the water looks, is still we get to see a lot of wildlife roaming around, even in the water. Uh, there's this whale tail coming out of the water, and there's also some echidnas flying around, uh, which we know can also dive in the water. Plus the devs have talked about how there's plenty of treasure to be found in the water, so I'm totally excited for that, and I guess The Witcher is gonna be scratching that Wind Waker itch in all of us, which I can totally get behind. Now they've shown clips like this a couple times where Geralt is walking around in some sort of underground temple, and in this one we see this ominous portal, and the developers talked about how we get to go to some alternate world in The Witcher 3, and I have a feeling that alternate world is actually where the Wild Hunt comes from, and it's pretty likely that this portal is somehow a gateway to that alternate world, and that it's probably related to Ciri in some way as well. Now you remember that douche from earlier that I said was going to get what's coming to him? 
Bam! This is that scene. And if we look closely at the hand dealing this fatal stab, we see some feminine fingernails, as well as a glove that has this uncanny appearance to the one that Triss is wearing later in this trailer. So it's pretty safe to say that for whatever reason, Triss had to execute this fool, and we'll have to see how this scene plays out in the game. So in the next few clips, we see some devolved juggalos, also known as ghouls, who happen to have some really creepy butt bones, by the way. We see some wraiths, some drowners, and of course, the griffin. Now we actually see this guy in one of the GameSpot Witcher videos that talks about a quest featuring a miscarried fetus that comes back to life as this grotesque demonic creature um, looking for some sort of revenge. And even though that sounds like a pretty unusual quest, I'm really not that surprised to find out that that's a quest in The Witcher, and I'm curious to see how morally gray that quest turns out to be. Ooh, I wanted to pause it right here because what the hell is this thing? I remember seeing it when I first watched this trailer and I still have no idea what it is. Uh, it kind of looks like some sort of frosty mutated Pokemon, but if you guys have any ideas on what this little creature is, let me know in the comments. Vampire. Is it 1358 yet? No. Then fuck off. Is it May 19th yet? Alright, alright, I think we've seen that meme enough for one lifetime, am I right? Uh, but anyway, I don't recall if 1358 is a significant year in The Witcher, um, but Geralt actually did have a vampire friend named Regis. This isn't the same guy, but maybe the story's related somehow. Alright, so in this next clip, Geralt is chasing the griffin on horseback towards a beautiful, stunning sunset, and I'm still just so blown away by some of these environments. And then we see a clip of what looks to be the fiend, but it's some sort of zebra-striped variant of it. And then we briefly get to see the guardian of the forest himself, the Leshen. I think this is one of my most anticipated monsters that I want to fight, uh, because the Leshen is just really interesting looking and he utilizes all of the forest around him to fight you, so I think this is going to be one of those really dynamic monster fights, so I just can't wait. So right here, the narrator says that when you clear out the monsters from a village or a particular area, uh, the people start to come back and actually repopulate those areas and they'll start opening up shops for you to go to, which I thought was a really interesting way to incentivize monster hunting. Not that it really needs an incentive because it's just awesome anyway, but it was kind of cool that they added that in there. And right here we get to see some of the armor variations in The Witcher 3, and it looks like they're color-coded either by type or by rarity. Uh, the green items are Witcher items, the yellow is magic, and then the blue is a master item. And it looks like you have to be a certain level to equip each piece. So let me know which armor is your favorite in the comments below. Now in The Witcher 3 you can upgrade several different skill sets, and one of those is combat. And one of the benefits of upgrading combat is shown right here, where we get to see Geralt deflect an incoming arrow, which is totally badass. But if it's anything like it was in The Witcher 2, there's a chance you won't run into enough archers to justify leveling up this skill, so just make sure you choose your leveling carefully. Now, there's also the alchemy skill set, which of course helps you improve your potions and your bombs, and with the new potion system that they're implementing in Witcher 3, players are going to be less inclined to sit and hoard all of their potions like we did in Witcher 2, so I'm curious to see if potions and bombs are going to be even more viable in this game than they were previously. And lastly, of course, you can level up your signs, and I tend to use my signs a lot, so I feel like this is always a good idea. We once again get to see a very brief clip of the Emperor of Nilfgaard, Emhir Var Emreis, who is a very important person not only regarding Ciri's story, but also with how the prophecy plays out. Now, I don't want to spoil it too much for any of you who are still trying to make it through the books, but I will say, just make sure that you know who Emhir Var Emreis really is before going into The Witcher 3. And by the way, the way that the witch fondled those legs right there really grossed me out, just saying. Now, one of the most engaging aspects of The Witcher 3 is the element of choice, which is illustrated in this scene here, which takes place in a pub with a couple of douchebags who want to fight Geralt. And Geralt has the choice to either defuse the situation by offering these douchebags some drinks, which I really don't find to be that great of an option, or he can choose to have his sword do the talking, in which case I think he's gonna shut these guys up pretty quick. Go away, or I'll kill you. In the next few clips, we see a bit more of Geralt's fancy footwork, including a big slice that he takes to a medieval juggalo, as well as the full glory of the dismemberment physics. Ah, dismemberment indeed. We get a quick look at horse racing, a hungover Geralt, and a stunning looking Triss who's all dolled up and swept up in Geralt's arms in what seems to be either a romantic night out or maybe even a wedding. And this is also where we see the gloves on a familiar looking feminine hand that was stabbing that guy in the chin earlier in this trailer. Whoa, 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 hold on a minute. Are those Triss and Yennefer boobies I see? Yeah, right, in your dreams, Geralt. 
Well, actually, it wouldn't surprise me if this was a dream sequence, because in the game we know that we get to choose to be with either Triss or Yennefer or neither, but we don't know of any option of choosing to be with both. And it's not that Triss and Yennefer necessarily hate each other, they get along pretty well, but when it comes to sharing Geralt, it's really unlikely that that's gonna happen, so I guess the fans are just gonna have to keep dreaming. These last couple clips show off some of the mini games that you can play, including the new card game Gwent, as well as some fist fighting, and a quick excursion for some underwater treasure. And it wouldn't quite be The Witcher 3 without some lovely ladies getting their daily dose of hemoglobin through a sacrificial ritual. Now, this final clip sort of had me doing a double take, because we see this whole pack of mules, uh, we see a couple dragon-like creatures flying around in the sky, and then we see this big ogre-like dude sauntering towards Geralt with another one off in the distance, and it's just kind of a curious thing to see such different animals and creatures sort of coexisting together in the same spot, and so I'm kind of wondering what's going on in this scene, but it still looks really cool. Alright you guys, that wraps up my commentary analysis of the most recent gameplay trailer for The Witcher 3 Wild Hunt, and there has just been a ton of Wild Hunt information, gameplay footage, videos, and different things coming out about The Witcher 3, and it's just kind of overwhelming, it's hard for me to keep up with all of it, but I'm gonna do my best to knock out the videos for you guys, and I think the next Witcher video that I'm gonna do is a commentary walkthrough of the Precious Cargo quest that was posted to the Xbox channel as well as the Witcher channel, and I think that video will kind of fall in line a little bit bit better with the types of quest videos that I plan on doing once the game is out next month. Also, I have a bunch of different series ideas planned for The Witcher 3, so hopefully you guys will enjoy what I have in store for you. Alright everyone, if you want to stay up to date with all of my Witcher content, make sure to hit that subscribe button. As always, thank you so much for watching, stay strange my loves, and until next time, this is Strangelove, signing out.